Hello everyone, Brett the Comic Novice here, and we now have more information on who Bailey the Spider Boy is, thanks to issue number three of Edge of Spider-Verse, and I will tell you, well played Marvel, well played, because the main cover of Edge of the Spider-Verse number three does not feature Bailey, but you know what, the other variants do. So props to you, well played, for getting as many people to buy those covers over your main cover. Props to you. And this video is just going to be discussing the first story done by Dan Slott. I know some of you have feelings about that, but uh, regardless, we're here talking about the first story done by Dan Slott, which goes into not Bailey's origin story, but... When we go back to issue number eight of Spider-Man, written by Dan Slott and art by Mark Bagley, we get a, you know, editor's note that says that, you know, see Edge of the Spider-Verse number three, because Bailey is currently, you know, outraged that nobody remembers him. He's been bouncing around, according to him, for hours, and no one knows that he exists. So additionally, what Edge of the Spider-Verse does is give us a little bit more information on the pages and panels that we were already given in issues 8 and 9 of Spider-Man by Dan Slott in the current run. And that goes into this page right here, where this is the same page of the editor's note, you know, see Edge of the Spider-Verse number 3, and we have the golden web outline for a couple of the panels, or and giving the story of Peter saving some of the people from the burning apartment building, which is why he decided to go max out his powers. Up above, we are given the Spider-Boy touching the building and say, come on, give me something. What's your story? With And then the golden panels actually kind of give us the power set of what he actually does. And again, this is for, further explained in Edge of the Spider-Verse number three, because Bailey has a psychic connection or can pull a psychic connection to either people he needs to help or things that he needs to find. That is some of his power source. And so the panels, the golden panels of spider webs kind of explain that that's what he's doing. He is connected to Peter. Now, the interesting thing about this is according to Edge of the Spider-Verse number three, he is now connected to Peter Parker and he cannot be unconnected until he's done saving them. At least that's what I get. But again, I will get into Edge of the Spider-Verse in just momentarily. But I do think it's quite interesting that even though this is a side story, it was almost a required reading if you want to understand Bailey the Spider-Boy just a tad bit more. Well, without further ado, let's dive in to Edge of the Spider-Verse number three, again, written by Dan Slott, art by Humberto Ramos. And this story is entitled, Nobody Knows Who You Are. Again, this takes place in between issues eight and yeah, eight and nine of Dan Slott's current run of Spider-Man. So we start off Bailey's story in this issue before we get to the issue number eight where he realizes that nobody remembers him. He is now jumping around in the double page spread excited to be back. He knows he's been gone, but he's not sure how long he's been gone for. And it kind of sinks into him right here that nobody knows who he is. And as we turn the page, we get the first look at who Bailey Briggs is. He is a, and it, you know, probably about a nine, 10 year old child, a redhead. So, uh, you know, for future movie pur purposes, he will not be a redhead. Just keep that in mind. And, and here's the interesting thing, again, about, you know, the whole comic book thing is how long has he actually been in existence for? How long has he been gone for? Because as he goes through his backpack, he pulls out a cell phone. So uh, when has he been buddy buddies with Spider-Man? I, I think there's going to be, I think the next trade is going to be so focused on Bailey. Like we're only, if you notice issues eight and nine, we're getting about two pages worth of Bailey per issue. I think we're going to continue getting that going forward until the third trade, where I think that that's where his fuller story is going to take off. So at this point in time, Bailey is trying to find desperately somebody who will know him, somebody who will remember him. He sees from afar Aunt May, and of course, she should know him. 
sadly, he does not, and he is therefore relegated to going to the homeless shelter, which he is very accustomed to. So, you know, at this point in time, is he homeless? Is his parents homeless? What is going on? We find out pages later that he is actually an orphan also. This is where his residents are. are. He goes to his locker to open it up to find some sort of trace of something, and there he connects to somebody who is in danger. Again, this is what kind of spells out some of Bailey's powers, where he has the ability to use the psychic thread that leads to a person who knows something or somebody who is in need. Again, this is what we saw regarding him touching the building with Peter Parker. And then we get to find out that he is facing uh, Lord, I don't know who this person is. I should probably check this out. Anyway, uh, I don't know who this villain is. He has his squad army fight Bailey. And I will tell you, I personally find the uh, the fight very fun. This is very, you know, I think to be super critical of some writers, I don't feel as though they understand how to write the energetic, the excitement, the <laughs> sometimes over ADHD-ness of a child. I am a teacher, and this kind of fits with some of the students that I do uh, instruct on a daily basis. We find that Bailey connects with a girl who is also, you know, who found a key. She's hoping that this key will lead her to some riches so that she can also eventually no longer be homeless because, again, this is not an ideal situation for anybody. Bailey decides that he is going to uh, solve the problem because they he she did to have their key these the key to that which is owned by somebody who is a villain so perhaps this villain should not get the key back Bailey takes things into his own hand crumples up the golden key and therefore the enemy that he's very aware of who de- don't remember him he's now made an enemy of his enemy so yeah. Get that behind that, I guess, suppose. And then at least you do get the kind of a touching moment at the very end. Because again, if anybody knows or has kids, all they want to be is accepted and loved and have somebody there for them. And Bailey has been crushed because of nobody knowing who he is. He tells her this, uh, this girl his name and she... They go back to the homeless shelter. Oddly, Bailey is very um, willing to show his ID. I mean, that is, I guess, the desperation. Maybe that's just who he is. Maybe that's what he wants to do. Maybe he is okay with people knowing who he is and what his secret identity is. But because of his situation, because of his homelessness, because of also his being an orphan, he is desperate for somebody to know him, not just as Spider-Boy, but him as in Bailey Briggs. Therefore, he kind of fashions himself a side family in the homeless shelter, and that's where we end off. I think that this is a fun issue. It's one of those things where I wasn't in appreciating the introductory to Dan Slot's run because it was supposed to be an issue number one, but it continued on with his Edge of the Spider-Verse that he did in 2022. Then we have a new second trade, which is the Maxed Out, but also ties to Edge of the Spider-Verse. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see if we can just get a Spider-Man, maybe, you know, have a spider, you know, sidekick from time to time. This could be fun. I think uh, because I've read World's Finest with Batman, Superman, and Superman having his own sidekick, it, you kind of wonder if there's anything nefarious about the whole thing. We do kind of get like, you know, the villain that he fi- fights in the, the streets, that this is the person who gave him or created the uh, setup to him getting his spider powers. So eventually, again, I think in the second trade or the third storyline, in the Dan Slot run is when we're going to actually find out a little bit more about Bailey. Maybe they're going to even have a couple of um, mini series. I hope not. Just keep this within the pages of Spider Man. That's all I would actually prefer. Don't go for cash grabbing. They're going to go for cash grabbing. But anyway, uh, what did you think about Edge of the Spider Verse number three? 
uh, at least the Bailey story, I am not... Yeah, I would have not picked this up had it not been for the Bailey story, so I didn't even bother reading the, the second story. So again, what did you think? Like, subscribe, whatever. I appreciate uh, all the comments. Uh, thank you for making me feel a part of the comic community, even though I do get things wrong a lot. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I will see you in the dollar bin, where who knows if this is going to get a second printing. I'm going to actually go out on a limb and say, yeah, it probably will. Thanks for watching. Bye. On who is Bailey the Spider Boy? Boy. Man, did I have a stroke?